guys! Welcome back to another episode of 33rd Street Knits. I'm your host, Teresa. You have found me on the YouTubes. Do not lose me again. Make sure you hit the subscribe button here, here, somewhere. Make sure you hit the bell to get all the alerts for all the videos. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Soy Journalista and on Instagram as 33rd Street Knits. Make sure you follow there. Um, all my project details, needle sizes, exact names of patterns and things will be on Ravelry. Um, I usually put them on Instagram too. Instagram is just literally just whatever I feel like putting on there. So you've been warned. Um, so before we even get started with all the stuff, let's address the elephant in the room that we can't see, um, Ravelonics. So I had big plans for Ravelonics. They all came to a screeching halt on day three. I'm not really gonna get into it because I don't wanna get angry and upset and everything. Needless to say, it just did not happen for me. Um, it kind of took all the wind out of my sails. I did not want to do anything. There's Rooney. <laughs> I did not want to do anything else for Revelonics. I was angry and depressed and just <sighs> over it. So not going to talk about it. Will I do that pattern again? Yes. At some point I will. Anytime soon? Mm, no. So sorry. I will say the other members of Team IVKN Wooligan's Gold Edition are knocking it out of the park. They are making sweaters, um, finishing blankets, mittens, hats. They're doing it all. Um, if you want to see part of that, Nanya has a podcast. It's called The Knitting Therapist. You can check her out. She's on YouTube. Um, and she will be showing you some of her stuff that she finished on Ravelonics. Um, and today... Today is sun. technically today is Sunday. Um, so everybody's got till midnight tonight to get their stuff done. So we'll see. Australia should already be finished. So, <laughs> but anyway, so Ravelonics is a no-go for me this, this time around. So uh, it's okay. I do have four finished objects. I did not anticipate four finished objects, but you know what? Here we are. And you're gonna keep seeing cats coming in and out. And here's a cat. Oh, I tried to pick them up, it didn't work. Anyway, so I have four finished objects, let's get into it. The reason I'm podcasting right now, it's 2 a.m., uh, is because I need to take this little thing to work. This is finished object number one. It is the crocheted gingerbread girl. She's so cute, look at her hair. Okay, so just to give you scale, huh, those of you that have been walk walking, those of you that have been watching the podcast for a few months know that I did a crochet gingerbread boy. Well, this is his girlfriend or sister or whatever, <laughs> friend. <laughs> um, and they're a set. So I made the set for a co-worker person of mine at the hospital. Her name is Elsa. And she's going to flip a lid when she sees this one. She's going to lose it. Um, I mean, look at the hair. Look at the, little, look at the little curly hair. I'm so happy with how the hair turned out. You have no idea. Um, so literally the only thing I had left on this was the hair. It's glaze. It's supposed to be glaze. So the hair which that's all one thing, one top. I had to do the face um, sewing, which took two minutes. And then the arms, the arms were the last thing to go on there. I don't, under I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know why that was the last thing for me to do. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't my brain. So, it went relatively well. I was super worried about the glaze because when I tried to do it on the boy the last time, it was awful. I tried to do like a kind of like a whip stitch around and it looked awful, awful, awful. 
So I tried um, kind of like a running stitch like you would see on a sewing machine where it's like in and out, in and out on there. And you can't even really tell what's going on on the top. So yay, that's the whole point, right? So happy with that. Um, I did have to kind of fudge the numbers because it didn't line, the numbers did not line up for whatever reason, but it's okay. It's crochet. We can fudge it. She will never know. She does not crochet at all. And then I skimped on the crocheted bows because I am lazy and I wanted this out of my house. Um, so she got regular bows. Also, I figure of all the things that will get messed up on this, the bows would probably be the a number one because people would fiddle with the hair and they are easily replaced. So she is done. She is done done. And I am so happy. <laughs> I am so happy. That's the back. And there's her hair. I will say she's a little bit bigger than the, the gingerbread boy. I don't know why. It's pretty much the exact same pattern minus the skirt. Um, I don't know. I do not know why she is so much bigger. Um, I use the exact same needle size and everything. So I don't know. I don't know. She's super, super cute. Um, now I told my friend Amber that I would make her a pair of these. And I don't know if I'm going to do that <laughs> because as kind of simple as these were, it's just a lot of work. It's just a lot of work for one of these. Um, so we'll see. I have to get out of the whole holiday, Christmas, uh, I winter, I'm not in the mood. So maybe in the middle of July or August or something, I'll be like, oh, you know, it'd be cute. Some Christmas stuff for Amber. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, if you go to my Ravelry page, in my favorites is a whole bundle for Christmas. That's basically Amber's bundle. So I, if I don't make these for Amber, I will make something else for her. Fear not faithful YouTube viewer. Um, so not to worry. So she is so cute. So yeah, so that is finished object number one. Um, now I'm kind of going out of order. Normally I do knit crochet and then whatever. Um, I'm doing my crochet finished objects first because I've got a big knitted object. Big. Big. Relatively big. Um, to discuss. And I want to save that for last because I actually want to talk about the crocheted stuff. So, the next two finished objects go together. Kind of. Sort of. Not. Yes, they do. Um, so, Kirsty of Granite Creations, which I talk about her probably every podcast or every other podcast. Um, she has a podcast on YouTube. Go check her out. She's from Scotland. Um, they are getting married to Scott, their boyfriend, Scott. Uh, and the theme is for the wedding is Halloween because they're getting married on Halloween. Not this Halloween, but a Halloween. So she put a call out and um, said, hey, I kind of want leaves, like autumn -y colors and pumpkins and Halloween stuff. And I'm like, oh, got you. I got you, I got you, I got you. My favorite holiday, speaking of holidays, hate Christmas, absolutely hate Christmas, love Halloween. We can have three Halloweens a year. I would be super pumped for that. I would be super pumped. So I was like, okay, I'm on it. I am on it. So first thing I made was these little leaf things. Ooh. And I'll hold them up individually. They're little leaf motifs from Yarn Yarnspirations. Um, the project is on my Ravelry. They're crocheted and they take about five minutes something like that. Um, super easy once you know what you're doing. And I just made, I made four of them so far, so far. Um, boop. Four little motif leaves for her. I have a whole bag. Look at this. Kirsty, look at this. I have a whole bag. 
I've got reds and yellows and orange that you guys saw. But then I have two different shades of green that I'm gonna do as well. Um, Cause there's still green leaves in autumn. So fall, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm basically gonna try to do, because the wedding's not anytime soon, we have time, which is good. I'm gonna try to do maybe like a few a week, you know, maybe anywhere from three to five a week, just to be like, okay, leaves, 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 leaves. We're gonna have all kinds of leaves. Um, I'm, I will try some other leaf patterns um, that I found, but I figured these are so easy to pump out. I'll just pump out a whole bunch of these. And, you know, with weddings and stuff, there's a, you know, the recep reception, the reception, the reception, um, my Sean Connery came out, the reception, uh, there's probably like a bunch of different tables and things and, you know, there's going to be all kinds of need for decoration. So I'm fine with it. So that is finished object, finished quote unquote object number three. I'm going to continue making these. I'm not going to show them on the podcast um until maybe I have like a whole box full and then I'll be like hey guys remember the leaves <laughs> leaves um so you you won't see these on a constant basis where I'm like I made two more and I made three more I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you like that but they were super super fun to do so IVKN people if you're looking for some leaves I got you fam also it's a free pattern it's on my Ravelry page go check it out um Finished object number three, and there's Poe. Finished object number three, which goes along with the wedding. I hit up Kirsty because I found this pattern and I was like, oh, this is perfect. It's perfect. Um, I was like, hey, what do you think about spiders? <laughs> yes, I know he has two eyes, shut up. So this is a no sew amigurumi spider pattern that I found on Ravelry. Super cute. These are supposed to be fangs. Um, when I do other ones, I'm going to make them white because they just don't, they look like I messed up. Um, they're not very pronounced. So I hit Kirsty up and I was like, hey, showed her the picture. I was like, what do you think about this? And she's like, well, I don't know. I don't like spiders really. Can you make it cute? And I'm like, I'm gonna try. And I think he's pretty cute. Um, and I showed her on our Zoom IVKN meeting, International Virtual Knit Nights, in case you guys are looking for a, a Zoom group. Um, and she's like, oh, it's, she, I don't know if she was thrilled with it, but then she's like, oh, can you put a top hat on it? And I'm like, of course, of course we can put a, top hat on the spider of course of course why not so I need to make a top hat and then I suggested that uh I make a second one and then I put a veil on the second one and there'll be a little bride and groom little spiders so Kirsty, if you want more spiders let me know it's totally a hundred thousand percent okay if you don't okay let me know let me know if you want them or not, because I'll keep making them. They were actually, this one took maybe like an hour, so they're not hard at all. And they're super cute and they're kind of, they're not. Now, for comparison, since I dropped you on the floor, um, that's how big he is. So he's not that big compared to some things. Some things. Um, so yeah, so Kirstie, if you want him, let me know. If not, totally fine, totally fine. Um, I'll just make more leaves and pumpkins. I'm gonna make, I've gotta make pumpkins. I have a thousand pumpkin patterns that I found. I'm gonna make all kinds of different pumpkins and different sizes and colors and stuff. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so, Amigurumi spider. That's object number three. And that is it for my crochet today. So I'm sorry, knitters, if you weren't totally enthralled with that but now it's time for knitting talk and I have a finished knitted object which is not socks which actually I have technically five because I finished my sister's um my sister's March socks 
she has them now you guys did not get to see them sorry not sorry but they're at their new home so this is sorrel mini oh wow okay that looks really good on camera <laughs> i'm not gonna lie okay sorrel mini okay so sorrel mini which i keep calling baby sorrel so just it's sorrel mini by wool and pine Com design company i may call it something different just roll with it okay i'm sorry i'm not a professional i don't get paid um right right we don't get paid for this <laughs> so mini sorrel um wool and pine company they are the same ones that did the sea glass tee the sea glass hat the sea glass sweater they're also ones that did the sorrel all the sorrels there's a dk weight there's a fingering weight there's a short sleeve a long sleeve there's one with both hair not both hair you know <sighs> find the sorrel that fits you okay that's all i gotta say um and of course sorrel mini which is the baby size um kid size whatever um i'm gonna talk about the pattern then i'm gonna talk about the yarn then i will talk about my actual knitting experience of it and how I messed this up. So, talked about the pattern. The pattern is very well written. I have one complaint about the pattern. I will get into that when I talk about the actual knitting of it. Minor, really. It's more of my issue. It's a preference. Um, so, whatever, we'll get into that. But very well written, very clear, very concise. Um, the stitches here, the ones, these little drop stitches, whatever you want to call them, um, not difficult. Um, and there's a video in the pattern that shows you how to do that. So no fear, no fear. Great pattern. Um, working through this makes me want to do other sorrels. So that, that's a test in and of itself that I made it through this. I'm going to do other ones which means it's a good pattern. So trust me, it's good. Um, yarn, let's talk about the yarn. Oh my God. So Malabrigo, so this is Malabrigo in their fingering weight, sock weight, whatever. Um, colorway is Archangel. Now, okay. Archangel is a fantastic colorway. Let me flip this inside out because this is all, um, pearl bumps and you don't really get a full idea of what the colorway really kind of looks like. Um, there you go. That is Archangel. I love this colorway, but it is so hard to find patterns that this works for. That's It's not just a plain vanilla hat or a sock or something just plain. Um, but because it's so variegated, the sorrel, the way that the the um, reverse stockinette works, it just, it breaks all of it up and it just looks so pretty. It all looks like it goes together and it just is one big happy family. So is it the perfect yarn for this project? No. Is it what I used? Yes, it is. Deal with it. I think it's still pretty. So um, kind of going with the whole autumn Halloween -y, uh, <laughs> type of thing that's going on right now. So it's the vibe. It's the vibe right now, people. It's the vibe. So happy with that. And it's Malabrigo. I could, I could find a Malabrigo yarn something. I can pick it out out of a crowd. I'll be like, that's Malabrigo and that's Malabrigo because it's so pretty. I love Malabrigo. So there you go. That's an up close. We'll get up close. So let's talk about the actual knitting. The cat is knocking over my film canisters. So if you hear stuff, meowing and dropping of stuff, that's what he's doing. Boy, and now he's playing with it. <sighs> Poe, unprofessional. Anyway, let's talk about the knitting of it. So, knitting slash blocking. Do you see this? 
Lisa, do you see this? This is what I have to deal with. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> Professionalism. I'm not getting paid. It's fine. So let's talk about the knitting of it. Okay. The reason I did the baby sweater, the baby mini, sorrel mini, is because of the drop stitch. I've never done that stitch before. I've done similar, but not the same. Um, so I was like, okay, before I buy a whole bunch of yarn for a big people size, let me take one single skein out of my stash that I will not miss <laughs> and try this out. Um, so not hard. Again, the stitch is not hard. It's very easy to figure out, clear, concise instructions. Um, but, but when you're knitting it, you have to be careful because your tension, if you don't get your tension right, like if it's the first two, one, two type of rows were a little tight. Um, my tension was just not, not perfect. Okay. Um, but you can kind of see it blocked out perfectly fine. It blocked out fine. I'm happy with that. Um, so just something to be conscious of, okay, when you're doing that. So that was um, problem number one. Problem number two. <laughs> um, this is reverse stockinette, okay, which basically means purl every row, okay. Um, I did magic loop because I don't have like a the certain size circular. I usually I'll fudge it with a magic loop, right? <sighs> because it was in the round reverse stockinette, I was getting laddering exactly at the front center and the front back of the garment. So backing up, my one complaint about the pattern is that your start and your middle, if you're doing magic loop, which a lot of people probably would, um, your start is right center in the garment. Not a fan. I am not a fan of that. I'm not saying that your garment should have laddering issues, but look at this goof. But if your garment has laddering issues, wouldn't you rather your garment have laddering issues on the two sides? where the arms go down to cover it. I think you would. I think you would. I know I do. So I had laddering. Let me see. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to show. So right, right in here, it's a little bit looser. You can't, you can barely tell if you, if you look for it right here, this big kind of red patch right there. Um, and then on the other side, because we're gonna have to talk about that, right, yeah, you can definitely tell right through here. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so, um, because I was getting laddering issues, I'd seen on Ravelry that people had flipped their stuff inside out and just did stockinette because the reverse of reverse stockinette is stockinette. Reversing of pearls is knits, right? So when you knit in the round, or let's say, okay, I'm doing reverse stockinette in the round, and then I turn it inside out and go the other way, I now have a hole because I went the other way. Fun. And instead of being intelligent and picking it up at the time when it would have been easier, I just ignored it. So I had one hole, one big gaping hole in the middle where my start was, where I reversed it. So I fixed that. So hi, that's the back of my, that's the back of my sweater now because it's got this just weirdness there, okay? Um, it's a gift, I don't care, it's fine. Uh, so I fixed it as much as I could, as much as I could. I am not a genius, so whatever. Problem number three, four, whatever. 
whatever number I'm on. Let's talk about the sleeves. So because I knew I had laddering issues and I flipped it inside out, I decided, okay, I'm going to knit the sleeves inside out, which worked great with the exception of picking up the armholes. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm being overly critical of the armholes here. Um, especially, especially because it's a baby knit, especially because it's a gift knit. I'm just being overly critical. Listen, first off, I don't even know if this baby's ever going to wear this. One. I don't even know how many times this baby's going to wear this. Two. Their parents, this baby's parents, they have no fucking clue about knitting. Three. So they're not going to find these mistakes. I'm being stupidly overcritical. But when I picked up, nope, this is a good one. When I picked up the armholes, I did them inside out. So you have to be kind of conscious of what it's going to look like on the reverse side because that's your actual outside, the right, the business side, if you will. So how am I going to show this? Hold on. Hold on. Right in here. Again, it's going to be really hard for you guys to see. It kind of has a little bit more profound pearl bumps because I did not super correctly pick up the stitches among the along the armhole. Is anyone going to know except for y'all and me? No one's gonna know. So I'm being hypercritical, but something to think about for the next time. Just saying. Or something to consider if you're doing it so you don't run into these issues. Um, the other thing, I did not do a gauge swatch because I didn't care. I don't care. Sorry, Chantel, I did not I did not do a gauge swatch because it's a baby sweater, it'll fit the baby at some point. Right? Um when I blocked it, that yoke, that opened up. And of course, babies have huge heads. Uh, so it's not exactly a bad thing. I just worry about it being like super low. Again, I don't know if this baby's ever going to wear it. I don't know if the mom even will even, you know, I don't even know. So I'm not going to be, I don't care. Um, it is what it is. Mom can deal with it. I feel like this is more, <laughs> I made the three to six month size. This seems like a one-year-old to me. Six to nine months. I don't know. Cause babies, listen, babies do not come in any of the correct sizes at the right times. They just don't. They don't. My nieces and nephews have never been the size they're supposed to be at their age. Like, they're not like, oh, they're six months, put them in six months clothes. No, it doesn't work like that. So I always feel better to make a bigger one than a littler one. So it's fine because they could be a super chunky baby. You <laughs> have no idea. So yeah. So yeah, other than that, it worked out pretty well. Um, there was a little bit of kind of flipping back and forth to get the, the ribbing done because I had to flip back to the other side. Um, I did make sure to pick up a stitch and that was fine. Kind of fudged that a little bit. It's fine. Super happy with it. Well, I'm not, I'm not super happy with it, but I like how it turned out and I like it again. I like it enough that I will be making more sorrels in the long run. Um, it is still a little damp, so I'm just going to throw it on the floor here and pretend like it's still blocking. <laughs> even though I've already messed it up. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Nobody knows. <laughs> so that brings us to works in progress. I have two new socks for my sister, which I will just show briefly because I know you guys are getting sick of this. I'm getting sick of this. You have to be getting sick of this. Um, I actually finished this one on IVKN today. Boom. Uh, this is Opal some leftover opal. Uh, I have started, actually started this, 
this one today. I had pre-knit the toe. Um, and I'm already doing the increases for the heel. And yeah, so I'm already on the second one. This one, I don't know. I may, I may finish the second one tomorrow. I'm not sure. But that one's, you guys did not see that one. So that one is almost done. Thank God. And then this one, this one is made with red heart, red heart, heart and soul with aloe. Boom. Uh, in the, I have no idea colorway, mellow stripe. Yeah. Um, both of these are the How I Roll pattern by Mary Catherine Briner. Um, yeah. Hey, Haley, look. Hey, pineapple, pineapple stitch marker, I'm using it. Um, so yeah, I'm working on that. It's not a bad yarn. It's not a bad yarn. It's it's kind of, you can feel the aloe in it for better or worse, but it's just kind of like, mm, I think I got it from Karen Jordan. Karen. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Plus she's going to wear these out. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> I will take all, all the scrap yarn. It's fine. So there's those two in my little Star Wars bag, which I absolutely love. Oh, we'll get to a Star Wars bag. I got a Star Wars bag for y'all in a minute, in a minute. So that's two. Uh, and then the only other thing that I'm really like super concentrating on right now, other than the socks, is a brand new cast on that you guys have not seen yet. So, oh, how I'm going to hold this, I have no idea. Okay. It's, it is in, let's say it is, it is in an awkward stage. Okay. So this is, first off, this is the Ripple Bralette by Jesse Made Designs. It's been done a ton. It looks, okay. And it's, she said, it looks tiny. Does that look like it's going to fit me? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say that's a hard, that's a hard fucking no. Um, now I have to wash it and block it and all this other crap. They said, they warned you, it's gonna look small. Just go with it. I'm still a little concerned. Um, <laughs> So the yarn is leftover from Treasure Sock Goddess. This is the Lusty Wench colorway, which is my favorite. It's got sparkle. There you go. Right in here. Yes. Sparkle. Um, those of you who've been around a while, I use this yarn for my Marvelous shawl, which is my... Um, Nick Graffiti Designs, Leslie Robinson. She's a brioche genius. I love her. Every pattern she does is like amazing. Um, so yeah, and that's coming out pretty true on camera. Um, so I literally cast this on the day after my Ravalonics fail because I just needed something. Um, and yeah, I just, I've, it's been in my, my, favorites for a while and I was just like well why not why not it's gonna start getting warm soon please lord please <laughs> please god please um and this would just be a nice little jammy top just to wear in just wear to bed and just be comfy in because it's sock yarn and it's gonna be nice okay so time for the time for the the tea ladies and three men that watch this probably um, let's talk about the goodies, okay? Mm, let's talk about the goodies. Men, I'm sorry. I'm about to talk about my chest size. <laughs> sorry. Cover your ears if you don't want to know. Or buy me a bra because that shit is expensive. Pick, choose your own adventure. Okay. So I am a 40C, okay? 40C. For the rest of the world that's not the United States, I don't know how you do that, this. <laughs> I 
I don't know if it's metric or <laughs> Celsius, Fahrenheit. I don't, I don't know how you measure that, but it's 40 inches C cup. Okay. <sighs> the way the pattern wants you to do this is it says eight to 10 inches of negative is more. What? Eight to 10 negative. So it's like sucking in. Okay. Um, I'm already suspicious. Okay. I'm mad suspicious. So, ladies, does this, this right here, does that look like it's going to cover a C cup? It don't, to me, it don't. I did not do the eight to 10. I did, I think it was just eight. It's like right at the eight. So whatever the size was, that's like eight inches of negative ease. I did that size. Um, I'm still highly suspicious. I am still highly suspicious that this will fit my body. My body. Um, we'll see. We will see. I'm working on, this is supposed to be the left side. And the strap. I, I don't know. It's going to be an experiment. Now I will tell you to the three men that are watching this, I will not be wearing this on the podcast at all. There's not a chance in hell, not a chance in hell, unless I am sponsored with $10,000, I will wear it on, on the podcast. Other than that, it's not happening. So am I suspicious? I'm highly suspicious. Are we gonna find out? I guess we're gonna find out later when I block it and all that mess. So yeah. So yeah, so if you've done the Ripple Bralette and it's actually worked out, let me know. Everybody on Ravelry is like, don't worry, don't worry. And I'm like, I'm a worrying, I'm a worrying. That being said, pattern's not hard. It's not hard. I'm just worrying about negative ease and size and how, what, what? Um, also did not do a gauge swatch. So, so there's that. I don't, listen, I don't care. I needed, I needed something. Um, I figure it will fit someone's boobs somewhere. I'll just go around to all my friends and be like, these fit your boobs, you wear it. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Anyway, so that's those three are the only things I'm really working on right now. Let's talk about cool stuff. Okay. <sighs> okay. So it was what the hell? Was it the day? No, it was the day after Valentine's Day. I get a package in the mail from Nomadic Yarns. Uh, I did not order anything from Nomadic Yarns that I'm aware of. <laughs> um, open the box and I literally, I literally cried like, you have no idea. I got so like tearied and it was awesome. So I got this. Look at, look at, look at it. It's so cute. Okay. So it's Baby Yoda's, Grogu's, whatever you want. I, fuck it. It's Baby Yoda's. Baby Yoda's with little coffee cups and exos and hearts and a little heart, little heart. Oh my God. And I was like, Oh, here, let's show you the inside. Let's show the inside. And there's the inside. 
okay? It basically fits like one sock. Oh my God, hold on. This is going in here. The world's tiniest bra is going in this box because I literally need something to put it in it. I've been waiting to show this on the podcast. It's why I haven't used it yet. And bam, 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 there you go. World's tiniest bralette in my new favorite friggin' bag. Okay, cool. Anyway, so I opened this up. I got super emotional and I'm like, okay, where the fuck did this come from? Um, where did it come from? Where? Where? My immediate thought was, well, it was yes and no. It was like, did Kirsty send me this? Because Kirsty is like a huge Baby Yoda fan. Huge. All right. Um, I'm like, why? Why? Why would she send me this? Like, what? What's going on? And she saw it. I posted it on Instagram. I made a reel. I posted it. And she's like, she's like, oh my God, I'm jealous. I'm like, so it wasn't you? She's like, no, it wasn't me. I'm like, who the hell? Who the hell sent it? Then I thought maybe my boyfriend sent it and I'm like, there's no way, there's no way. First off, he doesn't really have access to do this kind of stuff right now. Uh, also, no offense, three guys that are watching this. Um, that that would hit, that's hit, hit, this is hitting the mark perfectly. And I'm sorry the men in my life just don't do that really they just don't they get close but they don't like bam hit the mark like star wars end knitting what what so i was like that's not just no this is too perfect this, a man did not do this um so come to find out uh my friend lisa in austria sent me this just fucking because she's just like that so, danke, danke, sehr, danke, 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 I love it, I love it. Vielen Dank für meine Tasche. Ich liebe es. Es ist süß, es ist süß. Ah! He's so cute, I can't take it. So now I got a bag. I want to squeeze it, but I can't because there's needles in there. I'll injure myself. Um... So, and like, Lisa, you did not have to do this, but I ain't sending it back. So, <laughs> it's too late now. It's too late. So, that is in cool stuff. I also have a little bit more. I, we can make this podcast a little bit longer because I got to edit it anyway. So, I have other cool stuff I'll show you. But this is, this is A number one, the coolest thing. And it totally, totally made my day totally made my day it's still making my day it's fantastic every time i look at it i'm just like someone in austria loves me <laughs> i love it also love a box bag love a box bag they're perfect i love them i love them i love box bags can i sew box bags hell no hell no i can't sew box bags on the Star Wars train of cool stuff. And this has nothing to do with knitting. Knitting's over. But we're just going to talk about cool things I have acquired in my life. Um, I got Baby Grogu. I started your helmet. And Boba Fett. Oh my god, I almost dropped it. Boba Fett. They are both uh, Christmas tree ornaments. Because if you look on my channel, there is a video with my Star Wars Christmas tree and I am constantly acquiring Star Wars Christmas ornaments so these are my two newest ones I know Kirsty approves of these Kirsty Kirsty definitely approves of that one so I got those and then one last thing and then we'll wrap it up um which side note I play video games. I'm sure I've said this a thousand times before. I play video games. I stream on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.com. My username is HutSlayer83. All one word. Um, and I've recently been playing Mass Effect. 
I play Destiny, but I've broken away to play Mass Effect because the boyfriend's mildly obsessed with Mass Effect and I wanted to know what the fuck was with it. Um, guys, also, side note, over here, bloop, this whole shelf, this whole shelf, this whole shelf, that's all coloring books, adult coloring books. Um, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Marvel, Keanu Reeves, Lisa Frank, what else I got? What else I got? Frozen, Smurfs, I got all kinds of stuff. Oh, Harry Potter, that's all on there. Nickelodeon, that's all on there. I like coloring books, I love them. Come to find out, come to find out. There's a Mass Effect coloring book. Shut up, shut up. Let me find, I'm gonna find you my favorite, my favorite dude. Um. I would be lying if I said this was cheap. I'm not going to say how much it was because I don't want that. I don't want a record of my financials on the internet. Uh, this is my favorite guy. His name is Rex. He's a Krogan. And I love him. And he's so cute. He's so cute. He's really not like cute, cute. But I have a thing, you know. I have a thing for gators and stuff. So he's kind of gatory looking. I love him. I love it. Um, yeah, I played, I paid twice as much <laughs> for this as retail price. Hmm, totally worth it. Um, I have plans. I have plans. I have plans. Um, I have plans for this book. I'm not going to actually color in it, but I do have plans for it. So, love it. Um, I think there's also a Destiny one. I think I have it. If I don't have it, I will be getting it. I do not know. I need to I need to look that up. So yeah, I got that. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm such a nerd. So if you like video games or you just need something to listen to while you're knitting, you can watch me stream. I'm usually UK user friendly because I stream at night. So like midnight to 4 a.m 5 a.m central standard time so i know not normal people friendly but and uk people you're normal friendly you know what i mean normal u.s time zone friendly so love it anyway next time next time on 33rd street knits um bralette will be done those socks will be done um, yeah, I don't know what else I'll, I don't know what else I'll get done or start. Uh, but yeah, so there'll be, there will be some finished objects next time. Um, ooh, I need to give out medals tomorrow or the next day. I'll do it the next day. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. I'm rambling at this point. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Um, Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate every view, every comment, every like, all that mess. I appreciate you. Um, I super appreciate the Austrians right now. Austrians, not Australians. Um, I love the Australians too, but you know. Uh, so anyway, I will see you guys next time. Happy knitting. Peace out.